Welcome to week three of Radnor Memorial Library's presentation of Fall Back into Wellness. Today we're going to practice planking. We're going to start, planking is what creates a push-up and push-ups have always been uh, the barometer for uh, strength, especially core strength, but most people just try to do it with the upper body. So we're going to put that all together trying one and then breaking it down and putting it all together. So we're going to start in a quadruped position. So again, if you weren't with us the first week, if you're on a hard surface, like a hardwood floor, you're going to want to have a fairly thick mat or some padding. Um, if you have only a yoga mat, you're going to want to put some towels, maybe beach towel length or large bath towels underneath to, to pad you. Um, you can also use, I'm just going to pop up a second to get, you know, a, a small, like a, a, a narrow pillow. So you might have one of those on your couch. So if you, you know, want one for under each knee, uh, we're going to strengthen the center of you so you won't have as much pressure on your wrists. So all of these things put together will make you lighter on your, um, on your limbs so that you'll have um, the strength for the planking. So one of the first tricks to learn about planking, if you're on all fours, is that for the most part, people use their arms to hold their plank. So we need to use this whole upper body connection that I call the steering wheel connection. So pretend you're holding onto a steering wheel and that your shoulders are down and your breastbone is up. We're gonna do the same thing in the quadruped position. So one hand under each shoulder, one knee under each hip, so that you're in a good quadruped position, and you're gonna take the pointy parts of your elbow and steer them back towards your thighs. And what happens there, so if you were holding onto your steering wheel like this, or if your elbows are downward, it, you can see where it brings my shoulders down away from my ears, and you can also feel an engagement here under the back of your arms. So this is your whole upper body connection. So when we have the arms here for push-ups and they're going out, a lot more of the work is going to just come from the front, or if you turn the elbows, you're engaging this whole upper part of your body. So you're going to separate your fingers nice and wide so that you can use the whole hand. And the arch of the palm of your hand and a diaphragm in the top of your body are on um, top of your torso are connected. So that will brace you even more for the next part of the movement. So you're on all fours and you'll make sure one knee is under each hip and that you're not letting your rib cage sag down. So if you just think of pulling the bottom ribs towards the back of your body, so you're pulling the front of your body to the back of your body. You can probably just see a small shift in my torso. And then you're going to reach your tailbone backwards and the crown of your head forward. Pull your breastbone through your hands. So that's lifting your breastbone up off your belly button and engaging, bringing all your abdominals towards your spine. For the back part of your body, for the bottom part, you're going to take one leg out and just push the heel backwards. So you feel that length through that one side. And then slide that knee in. Slide the other knee back and reach through the heel, keeping your pelvis even. Sliding back, reaching through the heel. And just three to each side, if you remember from our first series. Now, take your first leg back and reach through the heel. Square up the hips, pull the belly away from the shirt, and make sure that your elbows are pointed back towards your thighs. And then you're going to slide the other leg back push through the heels, and pull the breastbone forward. And we'll just hold this for five, four, three, two, one. And then bring one leg down. We've tried that. 
And if you struggled with that, let's deconstruct it. Take the first leg back and push through the heel. Slide that knee in and see if you can lift the knee and bring it to that elbow that's pointing back towards the knee and place that one down. Slide the leg back. So we were assessing there. We were assessing if you could find it to start. And now we can perfect it. Slide the heel back, reach through that side of your body, lengthen through the crown of the head, push through the heel. Pull the knee in so we'll be able to put it all together at the end and you'll see how much more successful you'll be. So reaching through the heel, reaching through the crown of the head, and then pull the knee in to the elbow and take it down. Now we're going to slide that leg back and we're just going to reach till it lifts maybe a couple inches off the mat and then see if you can bring that knee in towards the opposite elbow. Slide the leg back so we're keeping the pelvis even and then bring that knee down. Slide the other leg back and reach through the heel. Reach so much that it lifts up and then bring that knee in towards the opposite elbow and place it down. Reorganize your spine. Send the tailbone back. Send the crown of the head forward. Slide the leg back. Pick up the leg. Turn the knee out to the side and bring it towards your shoulder. Take it back. Turn the knee down and come in. Take the opposite leg back. Pick the leg up. Turn the knee out to the side. Bring it in. Push it back and pull it in. Again, slide the leg back. Press it long. Turn the knee and pull in. Take it out. Turn the knee down, replace, reorganize whenever you need to. Take the leg back, push it long. Remember to keep those bottom ribs pulled into your body and that will make sure that the abdominals are still engaged. And we're gonna do one more to each side. Slide it back, lift up, pull the knee in, reach the leg back, turn the knee down and pull it in. So we're sequencing all the time. The more we sequence and allow all the parts of the body to help with this movement. And then round your spine up, pushing your hands and shins down. And if you have good knees, you can open your knees and reach back into what's called child's pose. But instead of collapsing into it, tailbone under and pull the belly up, reaching the hands forward. And then walk your hands over to one side and pull the opposite hip back. Reach the arms over to the other side and pull the opposite hip back. And then bring yourself back to center. And we're gonna add a little <clears throat> um, tricep strengthening and, and maybe giving your wrist some strengthening because this can be um, compressive to the wrists if you're not lifting and keeping your torso stable at the same time. So. Keep your tailbone where it is and reach your arms out as far in front of you as you can. And you're pushing forward with the hands and sending the tailbone back. And just let your head hang naturally between your arms. And then just take your elbows down and then up. And think of pressing into your palms. So this is your push-up, a tricep push-up position which if you nail down a tricep push-up, you're gonna be much more successful in um, a lat push-up where the elbows go out to the side. And then again, wag your tail side to side. Let's release some tension here. Let your head hang, pull your belly up. And then let's try the original plank that we went into. So one hand wide and then the other, and then we'll try a side plank to finish today. You're gonna slide one heel back, pull the belly away from the shirt, make sure the pointy parts of your elbow are pointing back towards your thigh bones, and then send the other heel back, push through the heels, pull the breastbone forward, ribs are up, neck is lengthened, and we'll see if we can hold this for 10, nine, eight, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So that's twice as long as we held the first one that you might not have had even as much success with, with the, the five seconds. And then reach your arms forward and your tailbone back if you have good knees. If your knees are problematic, you'll want to stay here. You don't want to take the weight back behind the knees. Let's see what we can do with a side plank. So you can do these with um, your um, legs close in or extended. The longer we get away from our center, the more difficult something is. So we're going to stay on the elbow, right underneath the shoulder, um, neck lengthened. So you just want to let your head follow the line of your spine. What you want to feel like is that you're, you're squeezing... Um, I want to refer to the, the, one of the first, uh, the fundamental series where we pressed and you felt the armpit engage. So you want to feel like you're, you're pulling your elbow towards your hip so that you'll really engage your lats, serratus, trapezius, other muscles there and bring the shoulder down away from the ear. So you don't want to be in your shoulder to try a side plank. So here, this is your steering wheel connection in a different configuration. And if you've been following this series, the steering wheel co connection is if you were holding onto the steering wheel with good posture in your car. So you can take this hand here for a little bit of a kickstand and then just bring your heels in line with your tailbone and you're just going to press down into your forearm and pick your hips up. So this is using your torso to help you do your side plank. And again, let's just hold this for five, four, three, two, one, and lower down. And then let's pick up again. And since we go with an series of three. Let's just tip, uh, dip down for three, two, and one. Let's try that to the other side and then we'll try the lengthened um, side plank. So many times when you're trying to strengthen or do, um, you know, push-ups go back to Jack Mullane, <laughs> well, and further. So it's a, it's a good functional movement if it's done properly. And so you have more success um, if you engage, line up and prepare. So it's like anything you do, if the setup is as important, you know, even like learning the piano, you learn all the fundamentals before you start making, um, putting it together into a tune. All right, so the elbow is right underneath the armpit. The heels are in line with the tailbone. We have our steering wheel connection here. And then we're going to lengthen the crown of the head so that it's in line with the spine. And when you do that, it'll probably lift a little through the bottom part of the torso. And then you're going to press the bottom hip up and hold five, four, three, two, one. And then we'll lower. And then we'll go up and do the three dips. So you're going to press the bottom hip up. So we're always fighting gravity going from below. And then just tap down. And it's going to make you lighter on your feet, lighter everywhere, sitting, standing, walking. Good. All right. Let's try a full body plank. And if you're not ready for it, stay with that one. So you're going to put the elbow right again under the shoulder, and you're going to feel that engagement of pulling the elbow in towards the torso so that you get the steering wheel connection. We're going to lengthen the legs out, and you're going to cross the top leg over the front. And that's going to allow you to squeeze the inner thighs. So the midline of our body is where stability comes from and our balance. So if we can engage that, we can create a lot of strength outwardly through the limbs and for mobility. So the elbow is under the shoulder. The head is lengthened. The legs are crossed. And then you're just going to press the bottom hip up and press down through your forearm. And you'll feel you know, the, the, uh, the length of you. And then you're just going to hold this for five, four, three, two, one, and then lower. So often when people are trying to do planks or side planks or any type of push-up, they're doing it from just the upper body. But when we incorporate everything through the whole body and use everything in both directions, it's uh, called oppositional energy that everything gets to help from one end to the other. All right, here we go. So... You're going to press through the forearm, press the hip up, lengthen through the spine, and hold. And then dip down and press up, and dip down and press up, 
and dip down and press up and then bring it all down and we'll go to the other side. So again, you have two weeks of this video to watch and perfect all these different bits. I also like to take my thumb inside my fist whenever I'm making a fist because we're doing all this with our thumbs all day with our computers and other things that we do. So um, giving the thumb a hug is giving it a nice stretch. All right, so we're gonna extend the legs, cross the top one over, squeeze the inner thighs. We've got the engagement under this armpit. And then we're just gonna press the bottom hip up with all those engagements. And you could probably stay here all day. And that's gotta be five, so let's take it down. And then we're gonna take it up and do the three dips. So engage the upper body, squeeze the inner thighs, and then press the bottom hip up. And not even being aware that we're using our abdominals to do that. And then let's dip down and come up and dip down and come up and dip down and come up. So that's our planking. Again, if you have any questions, if anything is unclear in my instruction, please feel free to email me um, and I'll get in touch with you. So enjoy those for the next two weeks and you'll just feel your strength build incrementally each time you do them and you'll feel each engagement settle in and support you.